Hello, theater fans. We are live at five. I'm Paul Wontorek. And I'm Ryan Lee Gilbert. What's the date, Ryan? It is Wednesday, November 15th. Thank you for knowing that. You're very welcome. Oh, it's payday. It's actually payday. It's payday. I did know that. <laughs> I did know that. <laughs> it's, that it's halfway through the month. It it's is payday. payday. It's hump day. It's and we have a great guest here. You, you loved him, I'm sure, on Looking. Because mm -hmm. I know there's a lot of Jonathan Groff fans out there. All Murray right. Bartlett is on Broadway, and he's right here. He's an M. Butterfly, and we're going to yes, talk to him. so good. And uh, he has a charming accent and all that. Yeah. All that stuff that we like. It's a big but, episode. But, there, <laughs> but uh, there's news. Well, first of all, there's yeah. an opening tonight. Yes. Congrats to John Leguizamo. John Leguizamo, Leguizamo back on history, Broadway. Latin History for Morons opening tonight at Studio 54. So exciting. We like it when he's around. Absolutely. Yes. Um, but yes, we have all sorts of exciting news. Um, the hit Broadway comedy, The Play That Goes Wrong, currently the longest running play on the boards. I love that. that right? I mean, like that's like <laughs> five that, months, yeah. right? Like that, yes, but, but still, you know, yes, it's you great. You take them where it's you great. can get them. It's great. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, it will, it's heading out on a national tour. And one of the stop, it stops it's definitely going to is the Amundsen Theater in LA. It'll play there for five weeks. This is launching in 2018. Um, additional cities and a touring cast. All of that information will be announced soon. We don't know any of that yet, but congratulations over there at The Play That Goes Wrong. Um, it's a great show, and it'll be great on tour. So, awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to do really well on tour. Absolutely. It's hilarious. Well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, well, Broadway's going to get a little healthier in January because the chocolate mm. factory is shutting down. It is. Good. I like <laughs> You're welcome. Good. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory <laughs> will close on Broadway. Final performance. January 14th at the Longfontaine Theater. I believe that's like six weeks away. Mm -hmm. uh, this is, of course, uh, the Broadway reboot of the West End hit. Right. So it was a big hit. In the, obviously, you all know the movie, Willy Wonka and the mm -hmm. Chocolate Factory. Uh, Gene Wilder and the book by Roald Dahl. And then so it was originally on in the West End. Sam Mendes directed Sam it Sam Mendes there. directed it in the West End. It was a bigger, more lavish. It was like huge. The set mm -hmm. was enormous. It right. was like wicked. And for Broadway, Jack O'Brien uh, assembled an amazing cast. Uh, Christian Borel is, of course, Willy Wonka. And um, it's a totally different version. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's been playing well to family audiences, but it is it's playing its show. final performance. Yeah. It opened in April. Uh, it'll be 305 performances. They are promising a tour starting in September 2018. Absolutely. And international tours and the UK, another UK tour. And... All sorts of tours, but less chocolate on Broadway. Yeah. Families across the world will get to see Charlie in the Chocolate Factory, though. So, uh, Come From Away, uh, that big musical, is being adapted into a feature film, which is really exciting. The Mark Gordon Company secured the rights to make a screen musical version of this, and the Tony-nominated score will be featured in it by Irene Sankoff and David Hine. A screenwriter and a director will still be announced in the coming future, um, but you can, of course, still see Come From Away on Broadway. Broadway at the Schoenfeld Theater right now, and another show launching a tour in 2018. It'll travel to U.S. and it'll travel across the U.S. and Canada, beginning at Seattle's Fifth Avenue Theater in October 2018. Now that's going to be interesting to make a movie of that because yeah. the, it really is an ensemble show on stage, right? A lot of times it's it's so much right. of an interaction, and almost and all the actors are on stage all the time playing different it's little characters. It's going to be interesting yeah. to make it literal, yeah, and to go to Gander and actually like film all that stuff. I mean, I I hope they do, yeah. I hope they go there and they film it there, and yeah. I'm sure they will. I'd love to get like an airplane. Jen, Jen I mean, I hope Jen Colella, Jen Colella. reprises. Yeah. yeah, they could yeah. just do the whole broadcast. cast. Why yeah. not? Plane scenes on a plane? Right. And it's also, sure. like, it's uh, how, I, I don't know how long it's going to take them to do this movie, but usually they kind of let these things, you know, have their time yeah. on before they make the film. But it sounds like they're going to kind of jump right in here. Cool. So... Uh, congratulations, Keegan Michael Key, of who is now on Broadway in Meteor Shower. He's engaged. Yes, this is a total surprise. He was here just days ago, standing on this very spot for a <laughs> photo shoot, and that those photos will be coming out uh, very soon. And he didn't mention that he was going to pop the question. No, he did not. Didn't bring it up didn't to any of his close scoop. friends, like <laughs> me. Who I, met, I met him that morning. Uh, he's a nice guy. Anyway, he popped the question to director and producer Elisa Puglisi. I, Is yeah, that how you say I it? Would, uh, or sorry. we can just call her Elisa Key. Yeah. Because that will be her name. <laughs> if she decides. <laughs> if she takes his name. She doesn't have to. No. Uh, November 14th, that's yesterday, he proposed yes. and he shared it on Twitter. He said, this is very sweet. She shows me every day that each one of us has the ability to help make the world a better place. I'm the luckiest man ever. She said yes. 
That's really exciting. Congrats. And it's in to previews those two. and it opens November 29th, Meteor Shower, that is, not their engagement, at the Booth <laughs> Theater. So, and I hear it's great. I can't wait to I see it. I can't wait to see it. Yeah, I'm it's so be fun. excited. Um, on Monday, we talked about how Kristen Bell is now producing this show called Encore that is getting all of these uh, former castmates from high school musicals, bringing them back together to re-put on the production that they did in high school um, with professionals involved this time. Uh, we didn't know on Monday when this would start, but we do now. And it'll be filmed it. They've already filmed it. <laughs> yeah, so it, it's going on. ABC December 10th will be the first edition. Um, I don't know if this is going to be like a weekly episode thing, but the first edition of it will be on December 10th. Um, and it is fe featuring students who put on a production of Into the Woods. Oh, so which just celebrated its 30th anniversary. Mm -hmm. That's going to be good. Yeah. So, um, and so all the former students will be involved. And then they're bringing in coaches and Kristen Bell, of course, and Broadway directors, choreographers, and voice coaches. And if you want to be on Encore, if you did a musical what? in the 1990s or the early 2000s, the deadline for these applications is December 4th. Quickly approaching. What? So yeah, I didn't know you as could long as you did a show in the I'm '90s not, or the eligible. early 2000s, Murray Bartlett might want to get his whole <laughs> team back, his whole crew his back shows. together. Um, Janine Tesori and Ann Kaufman will be co-artistic directors of the Encore's Off Center series, which is of course the the series that highlights off Broadway musicals. Um, Michael Friedman, who of mm. course died a few months ago, was the artistic director, so they're taking over for him together. Janine Tesori. Of course, won a Tony for Fun Home. She also worked on Philly Modern oh. Millie, one of my favorite shows ever. Yes. Shrek, Carolina Change. Uh, and Kaufman recently directed Marvin's Room at the Roundabout. Yeah. So they're both very talented ladies, and it's in good hands. Right. And the Jimmy Awards, we're all big fans of the Jimmy Awards. Jimmy, uh, Jimmy. Jimmy, this is the... See? Right. Good chance. Jimmy, Jimmy. <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy. I'll Jimmy, Jimmy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah, but, but it's There's like, a song called like, Jimmy. Jimmy, <laughs> oh, Jimmy. Oh, Jimmy. Yeah. I'm singing Gimme, Gimme with Jimmy, Jimmy. <laughs> Which you can also Sorry, just always. Sorry, uh, The Jimmy Awards, um, these, we honor the high school, those incredibly talented high school performers. You know, Eva Noblezada was part of these, ah, Ryan McCartan, yes. Kyle Seelig, um, Abby Corrigan. These are happening in 2018 on June 25th at 7.30 at the Minskoff Theater. Super early Theater. announcement. Yeah. Well, I mean, they always happen right around the, t right, like right after the yeah. Tony Awards, but now we have the so official get day. excited. Yeah. So Next <laughs> June. <laughs> Honor those high Happening. schoolers. I, you know, sometimes I look over at the comments during the news section and John Tilford just wrote, Into the Woods, overrated. <laughs> Into the Woods? John. Just some shade. Hi, John. <laughs> How's it going, John? <laughs> uh, and I also wanted to point out a new episode of Show People yes. has gone up on the site with Who's Mercedes <gasps> Rule. You guys, I've been obsessed with Mercedes Rule since forever. I think so probably cool. since Big, maybe. Oh, yeah. She's the absolutely. mom in Big. Yeah, but yeah. Fisher King is like major One of in my the life. Most so the fact that I got to look at her for a half hour yeah. and it wasn't awkward for her was great. <laughs> and she, so I highly the, recommend this episode. Yeah. And there's this whole feature to go along with it now. And there's, yeah, there's all kinds um, of yeah. things. We have, we have a little drawing. You're all, welcome. All happening. Out there. You've got to keep watching us. We keep changing things. <laughs> exactly. All right. So we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back with Murray Bartlett. winner all across North America. This stirring and inspiring musical takes you to a place you never want to leave. Celebrate the best of humankind and the best in all of us at Come From Away, the remarkable true story of the small town that welcomed the world. You've got to get up every morning. For Carol King, finding the top of the charts was easy. Finding her own voice was beautiful. 
beautiful. The Carol King Music. Hey guys, we are back on Live at Five, and I am joined by Mr. Murray Bartlett. Hello, sir. Hi. Lovely to be here. Just shared his lip balm, his Australian lip balm. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, has the best products on him. <laughs> How you doing? I'm doing really so well. So nice to meet you. Yeah, so nice to meet you too. I'm Welcome to the to Broadway. Here. Thank you. I'm excited to be in this amazing room. In this amazing room. I'm scared that I might sort of disappear into the background though with this <laughs> shirt. <but> it's <laughs> good. It's a good lumberjack, a lumberjack look. Yeah, there you go. Well, it's getting cold in New York, you know. Yeah, um, oh my God, you're on Broadway. I am. How'd that happen? Was this something? I don't was this, know. Was this, has this been a dream of yours? When I, I first uh, started coming here, I didn't have a green card, so it was difficult to get into equity. Um, so I wasn't. You're from Australia. I am let's, from Australia. Let's just get that out of the yeah, way because I'm sure they're all charmed by the accent. <laughs> and do I, do you actually work this accent really hard, like in New York? Do you find moments where you're like, I'm gonna just pump it up <laughs> right now and be really charming in this moment? I don't do it consciously, but you maybe should. you should talk to my friends, and I probably do like you know up the ante on yeah, occasion. Yeah, a little bit. Um, Anyway, so yeah, no green card. So no green card. So I couldn't, I couldn't, you know, I couldn't join Equity uh, for a number of years. So I wasn't chasing after right. theatre stuff for a while, um, for the most part. Uh, but then I got a green card, and those, so then I, you know, we, I started to to look at doing that again. But I, I I'd sort of got into a groove of doing TV stuff, and mm -hmm. and so it, it took a while to, you know, just audition every now and then for for a play that I loved or someone that I wanted to work with. And I mean. I worked with, you know, I got to work with Julie Taymor. So, so was, was that, that was Julie Taymor like the the magnet that drew, drew you into this audition? I mean, it was a it was a number of things. I mean, firstly, you know, you want to audition for stuff because you're an actor and you audition. That's yes. what we do. Um, but I was particularly excited about this because I think Julie Taymor was amazing, yeah. and um, I think so even more now. Um, I love the play. I and Butterfly, David and Butterfly. Hoang, yeah. I, I I fell in love with it in 1988. When I saw yeah. it yeah, in high school, I, I like loved it when I first saw it. Yeah, and it's a new Me version. Too. It is a new version. It's, it's kind of like you're doing a new play. Yeah, we uh, you know we had a a, a workshop for uh, just four or five days. So you were in that workshop. I was. I yeah. talked to Julie Tamer about that workshop. What she, did she say? She's like? very excited about. It. She loves her cast. She, she does. Yeah. Oh yeah, she went out of her way to talk about how much she loves the whole cast. It was a it was a real love fest yeah. working on the show, um, and it you know it was amazing having that workshop in the beginning because we were all just sitting around the table, um, and it was very collaborative. Mm -hmm. She was, um, you know, she, she's such a, a, a strong, amazing presence of a person. Um, and, and in that setting, she was so generous in terms of letting everybody have, you know, so much input right. uh, in terms of what was happening, happening with the script and some really interesting shifts were made in that few days. Yeah. But it also gave us a chance to really get a great rapport with each other. And like, luckily, it's a, it is a really lovely group of people. But to have that connection at that point, a few months before we went into rehearsal, I think was so great because when we came to the first day of rehearsal, we were familiar with each other and mm -hmm. had that kind of you know lovely feeling already. The uh, the physical production, the original play had a beautiful physical production. This one has a, a, a whole new beautiful physical production. There's a lot of panels. There is a lot of panels. I discussed <laughs> the panels with Julie because the there's a lot of maneuvering of panels. <laughs> Do you, are you um, moving panels around? We are all and moving And Julie's panels. all about, uh, you know, n not using, overly using technology, right? Because she wants it to be like, you know, it looks like it's real theater. Yeah. Uh, classic theater tricks and theater you know, maneuver. So you guys are yeah. moving these set we pieces are, yes. all around the stage. Yes, it and I, sometimes that you know you got to get them right in the right position, and yeah, it's it seems like tricky. a lot. It seems like a lot to, to deal with. I mean, it's certainly you know, I mean, every show is always different every every time you do it. But this show, particularly, yeah. <laughs> it's like there's a lot of room for variation. I mean, obviously, you're aiming to get them all perfect, but it's but I think that's one of the beautiful things about it in a it way is, is it it moves you know, mm -hmm. with human beings are moving it, yeah. so it has that kind of organic feel to it, even though sometimes the stage can look quite stark, but it, you know, it feels like a group of people making this thing happen, mm -hmm. which, uh, which is beautiful. It's also like a, I feel like it's a, it's a great concept, the set, because it's, it's a very simple concept, but it's very complicated in the way right. that it, yeah. you know, it kind of, uh, the, the movement of it. It should look the easy. Show. And, and, yeah. and, you know, I saw it early in previews, and I, now it does look easy. Now, now, <laughs> right. now that yeah. it has a flow to it. Yeah, the but, previews but I, were, I loved it. Oh, good. I, I yeah. love the whole production. And yeah. So let's talk about, so you play Mark. I do play Mark. Um, Mark's kind of um, a bad influence on Clive Owen's character. Is that fair to say? Yeah, he's a bit of a douchebag, really, yeah. isn't he? Well, I was going to I was gonna use that <laughs> phrase, but I thought, <laughs> you're the guy playing him. I'll let you say it. No, I think it's that's kind the of a point. Yeah, 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 he kind of uh, wants to, yeah, he like, 
doesn't necessarily treat women women well. Maybe he goes out a lot. He's Maybe a he's sort of living it up. Yeah, he's a misogynist. He's misogynist. racist. He like he represents all that sort of you know all that kind of side of Clive, Clive Owen's character, yeah. Gallimard. Um, so and I mean, what was exciting to me about that is that we're seeing a lot of that at the moment. You know, we're yeah. seeing a lot of those types of characters in you know. Yeah. Positions of power and and that kind of energy, I guess, mm -hmm. rearing its head um, in the world. So it's you know, it's very present. It's so interesting with this play because it was you know it was done in the '80s yeah. and doing it again now. It's so pertinent to to now, and it's mm -hmm. ki it's kind of uh, it's amazing. It's sad in some ways that we haven't moved past some of these yeah. things. You know that the that the play is is dealing with, but uh, it, but anyway, so. I think you get to laugh at Mark, which I think is hopefully mm -hmm. a good yeah. thing. You know, comic relief. Yeah, yeah, it is comic relief. Yeah. But he's also, you know, some of the stuff he's saying is really gross. Yeah. Um, and and he obviously pay, plays a, a, a important role in the the lead character, sort of figuring out his identity and being the kind of the devil on his shoulder in mm -hmm. a way. Yep. Yeah. How's Clive Owen? I adore working with him. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's you know. He's one of those actors that you're on stage and there's like a twinkle in his eye mm -hmm. and you like he listens and you're, you know, it feels very alive. And mm -hmm. he's also just a very genuine, down to earth, lovely man. So there, there's a lot of intensity to his performance on stage. Is, is, yeah. he, is he intense off stage or is he? I mean, I guess he, he's very grounded uh -huh. as, as a person. Yeah. I think I think he brings that onto the stage for sure. Um, so yeah, I guess there is an intensity in his groundedness in a right. way, but he's also like a jokester, you know, it was uh -huh. like fantastic because, um, I adore Julie and this is not a criticism. I adore Julie and she can be really intense in right. the rehearsal room. Right. So it was lovely to have also Clive and, you know, so it was a lovely, you know, balance of, of personalities, but having Clive being kind of a little jokey and, you know, always up for a kind of a laugh, which Julie is as well, but mm -hmm. so it takes a little bit sometimes to like break through the <laughs> intensity. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, yeah. So, of uh, like I mentioned before, you were on Looking. Yeah. Um, and uh, you played the character of Dom. I did. Yes. And uh, so you know Jonathan Groff. I adore Jonathan Groff. Who everybody Groff. watching adores Jonathan Groff. Yeah, um, yeah, he yeah. was just recently here. so You can feel him you in the air. You can feel his energy. It sort of yeah. lasts like a week after he's <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, do you, you want to reveal any secrets about Jonathan Groff? What it was like getting to know him? I mean, I don't know. He's just, this is going to sound really cheesy, but he's one of the loveliest people I've ever met. We've yeah. become really great friends. We all did on the, the, on that show. Yeah. Um, he's just, uh, you know, a, a genuinely good person who, um, yeah, I don't know. There's there's nothing much more to Not say. Not much to say, that. yeah. I mean, you know that, right? Yeah. He just like yeah. exudes that. Yeah. Plus, you know, he's incredibly talented, obviously. But he's um, he's a great friend. I have to say that a really, really supportive, lovely, lovely friend. Do you miss the friend. that mustache? That mustache was. I grow it back kind of every now iconic. and then. Every once in a while, you throw it back on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. throw yeah. it back on. Just not not for a butterfly. No, I had it at the beginning of uh, rehearsals actually, but oh, Julie yeah. wasn't having it. Right. She's like, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> you tried. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah no. You also met another uh, person we know and love on the set of Looking, uh, Andrew Keenan Bolger. Boy, did I meet him on the set of Looking. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, that was a memorable moment. <laughs> it's a, it was one of those weird situations <laughs> where you have a sex scene with somebody and that's, you know, there's not a lot more to it. Yeah. And they arrive on the set and you're like, hey, how are you? All right, let's get naked. Let's do it. <laughs> let's do this. So, yeah. uh, but he's, you know, I'd, I'd seen him before and, and, and stuff <laughs> with clothes on uh, and, and was already a fan. And he was, you know, he, he, he was wonderful. And it was, you know, it was, those things are always a little awkward in the beginning. And mm -hmm. then, you know, if it's a, a lovely, generous actor, which he is, everyone just sort of right. settles down. You get right. on with it. Yeah. You, uh, you were also in The Boy From Oz in Australia. I was. So after uh, Hugh Jackman did The Boy From Oz on Broadway and won yeah. Tony, he then took it to a start in Australia, the show not with him in it. But I did that original production, actually. You were in the original? I was. You are on the cast album? I am. That I, I used to listen to I all the time? I originated the role of Greg Cannell. Oh, my God. I, I, used to, I listen to that album all the time. Yeah. I didn't realize you were in that production. That was me, yeah. Oh, wow, yeah. look at that. Yeah. And then, so then after Broadway, he took the show back to, and you did like an arena tour, which means That's you right. played like enormous 
yeah, enormous huge. arenas. Yeah, and you yeah. did Boy From Oz again, and you yeah. did it with Hugh Jackman. I did, yeah, yeah, with some of the original cast. Um, right, okay, but yeah. not the whole original uh -huh. cast, and a sort of expanded, you know, um, dance team and uh, and all that. But yeah, that was that was amazing. He was, I mean, I seem, I feel like, I'm just saying that I love everybody, but I, I have been had the good fortune to work with amazing people you you've met you i'm sure and he's yeah. just yeah he's like a jonathan Groff. he hasn't person. been here in the last week uh, no but he's welcome no, i couldn't feel his presence he's welcome but <laughs> anytime just stop by we'll turn the cameras on um but i mean he was so amazing in that show yeah. and he um you know he really sort of set the energy for that cast and just you know an amazing person i you, I walked into the theater one day after him and he said hello to everybody and said their name. Every single person, like, you know, like 30 people all the way to the dressing rooms. He just, he's that kind of, you know, that kind of generous, wonderful person that just uh, reaches out to people and connects with people yeah. and is, you know, makes a point of doing that. But uh, yeah, it was, it was an exciting tour. We got to, you know, see all our friends and family all around the country and play these huge stadiums, which was very bizarre, really, because you have these big yeah, IMAX so I was wondering, screens. what's it like doing a show like that in a well, space you, like that? You're, you're filling that stadium, but you also have these big IMAX screens with cameras <laughs> in, in the yeah. audience. So you're sort of trying to play intimate as well, so you're right. not like, doing this on camera. <laughs> right. Um, but it was, it was, it was kind of weird, because you, you feel like it would be um, a little overwhelming or you'd get nervous. But because it's such a big audience, I'd never yeah. done that before. Yeah. It's sort of like this big ca you know, cavern and you're like, well, I can't really see anybody anyway. So you just yeah. kind of let loose. And it was, it, was, yeah, it was a wonderful experience. And you sang I Honestly Love You Every Night to Hugh Jackman. I did. <laughs> yeah. No, wait, but what, was there a kiss or not? <laughs> there was a there kiss was on Broadway. But in the, the original production in Australia, there was no kiss. Oh, okay. We embraced. Okay. Um, but, and we went back. So there was like a little controversy about that. People were like, where's the kiss? Yeah, kind of. I mean, not amongst us because we just, it was really, it wasn't a, a matter of taking out the kiss. It was yeah. a matter of going back to the original uh, so you were script. So you were doing the original version of it. Yeah, okay. because uh, all cool. of us had, had, there was a lot of things in the show. Uh, Peter Allen was, you know, really loved in Australia. Yeah. And there was a lot of real Australianisms in the original script yeah. that didn't really work on, right. on, right. on Broadway. Mm -hmm. yeah. So they wanted to put all those things Got back it. in because okay. it was back in Australia. So they basically just reverted back to the, the, the script. Um, I love had. that album. I think my CD is worn out, though. Really? How, is it available digitally? That original Boy From Oz album? I'm not sure, to be honest. <sighs> it was so good. I used to listen to it all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have it. I'm going to find it. If anyone can send them the copy, please do. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you never know. Um, uh, uh, Alec wants to know, have there been any onstage mishaps at M Butterfly? People love hearing about onstage mishaps. I mean, well, you were there in a preview. <laughs> there was it was not mishappy. There was just a panel. No, place, yeah, that's no. All. There was a few panels. Uh, there was one night in a preview, in an early preview, where um, there's one scene with a, with a chandelier, and the chandelier felt like it was falling on us. It actually just Phantom hit one of the... Phantom of the Opera the, drama. Right? What? Yeah. Um, it, it hit one of the panels and, like, you know, sort of shattered. And we were in, at a cocktail party, and we were all like... Oh, goodness me. <laughs> <laughs> and just kept going. So uh, that was interesting, but uh, that's never happened again. Wow. No. Do you have any uh, dreams of doing a Broadway musical? Maybe I with Jonathan dreams. Groff? <laughs> Maybe <laughs> Jonathan Groff? I don't know. He's I mean, yeah, I would love to do something yeah? like that. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I love to sing. It's not something that I've been doing a lot in uh -huh. recent years, but I... You know, it's, it's something that's kind of scares the hell out of me, to be honest, but I would love to do it. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, interesting. See, I didn't know you had that, that side to you. Well, yeah. I feel like we should just come up with like some Jonathan Groff pairings. Marriage Equality in Australia. Oh my God, yes. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Uh, Matt Roden really wanted me to bring this up. Of course, yeah, yeah, you're yeah. Australian. You're openly gay, by the way. Uh -huh. Bravo to that. And what, did you decide that from really early on? Like, yeah, in your I mean, career, it wasn't you were really just an like, issue for I am me. what I am. Yeah, I didn't want to go down any other track, I guess. Yeah, and so yeah. the people of Australia yesterday, right, voted. Oh, this is so exciting. This is huge news. Yeah, I'm, I had to make sure I was on the electoral roll so I could vote um, because it's you know, a little tricky when you're away. But, yeah, it was just um, brought us all to tears. Yeah. Um, it was a, a wonderful, a wonderful thing. I mean, a wonderful thing for marriage equality, obviously, right. but also just... Uh, sort of a just a wonderful kind of vibe in Australia that there is this you know this um, climate of acceptance and love and um, 
Yeah, so it, it's it's a, a beautiful chapter in Australia's history. Australians just seem like such, they just seem like they have it all figured out. Like it just seems. I don't like know about that. <laughs> We've you, got our do, problems. Do you go down there often? Do you are you in Australia often? I go at the end of each year for like four or five or six weeks. Okay. I'm trying to like expand that uh-huh. um, in December when okay. things are generally sort of quiet for me work wise, and it's summer there. So uh-huh. I miss the beginning of winter, get the beginning of, right. of summer there, and and you know it's holiday time, so I get to yeah. see my family and friends. I have you been? No, I'm dying to go, and I, I keep trying to find like a like now I know they're doing Priscilla. Priscilla Queen of the Desert is right. back yeah, yeah. with Tony Sheldon, yeah, 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 and, yeah. yeah. and David Harris. I mean, and I would love to see that. But oh, you know David? Yeah, oh, love David. We did yeah. Boy from Oz together. Oh, David was in Boy from Oz in the original production. Yeah. Oh, yeah. he's in Rags right now at Good Speed. Ah, Fantastic. Cool. And he was in Next to Normal. Yeah. 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 He's um, awesome. yeah so I would love to go. I want to go to Australia. It's beautiful. You know, I'm, I mean, I'm biased, I guess, but it's. Uh, I come from Western Australia, which is, you know, kind of a wilderness, really. I mean, there's a, a city in the south, but most of it's desert and really kind of wild country. And so if you love that, which I do, it's amazing. It's, you know, it's one of the most sort of remote places on earth in terms of, you know, cities and, and countries being so far away. So it feels very quiet. Mm-hmm. It feels like the opposite to New York. I feel like it's a great place to go from New York as you get the yeah. you know, the opposite energy. Right. Uh, yeah, I just wish it was like an hour away. It's yeah, a, it's, it's instead a of a like twenty-four. It's a journey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a journey. Yeah, it's not it like a JetBlue flight long from LaGuardia. No, you need a good <laughs> chunk of time and, and patience yes. and some maybe good sleeping aids. Uh, yeah, <laughs> maybe that too. <laughs> well, um, everyone needs to see M Butterfly. It's at the Court Theater. It is, which is on Forty Eighth Street, and so it's great to see plays there too because it's such a nice, beautiful little. Really jewel good. of a theater, a jewel box of a theater. It holds a lot of people, but it feels very intimate. Yeah, it it's feels really, very intimate. It's beautiful being on stage there. It's like the audience is in shelves. They're right there, and you're, yeah. you're right with them. It's yeah. beautiful. Cool. Well, yeah. thank you so much for coming in. Thank so nice too. to meet you. Yeah, and Everyone, you. check out M. Butterfly, and we'll be back tomorrow with another amazing guest at 5 o'clock. Bye. Bye.